Hi, I'm David Eicholtz with David Richard Gallery here in New York City, and today I'm with uh, John Simon, and we're standing in the gallery uh, surrounded by his work in the new exhibition called Drawing Air. And uh, we chose this shot. We're, we're going to talk about the curation of the show. We went through in his studio a lot of uh, videos standing in front of each individual piece um, for people to hear John talk about each of these. Some of the pieces uh, were are really revelatory. Two of them actually are here we're standing in front of. Uh, the one stacks here and um, absence to our, well, I'm not going to say left or right, I always get turned around. But anyway, that one, the gold one, <laughs> the circular one. So uh, when the work came, what sort of made me think about doing this uh, discussion was uh, last night after we pretty much had all the work up, John had commented how he found the work very, was having a different sort of feeling and, and sensation yeah, well, I about the work. I got to see it in very good light <laughs> and well, it spread was, out. It was light, but also the way and, it ended and up we've sort of... we regrouped it. Yeah, yeah in grouping. The, in the studio, you sort of put them up where you have space at the time and moving things around, but this is actually a very deliberate grouping, and you did a great job. And it sort oh, of thank you. pointed <laughs> out a kind of a natural division in the work, but also where they joined up. So that, that taught me a lot about it. Well, I think in the... We didn't have an overall plan other than the fact that you knew you wanted stacks right there. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. and it's perfect. <laughs> it's yeah, like it's totally framed by the wall. Fits the wall perfectly. perfectly and shape. so it was like made for it. But what was interesting was then when the work started coming in, and I was thinking about it over the last couple of months as I was trying to write about it and, and, um, and, and think about the show. Um, when it got here and we started putting the work together, the two large pieces you know, um, needed some quiet space in between them. And I was thinking just about the, the white, uh, the pieces that were predominantly white. But as I, we started putting them up, I realized it's, it's also very powerful for a couple reasons. Um, Stax is not, is one of the few that you did not paint, uh, draw over. Yeah. But it's a very powerful piece as we'll get to b based on your meditative practice. And so that's what sort of makes these revelatory pieces in a way. And it turns out, looking at this piece now, the one here in the middle, uh, Blue River? Blue Flow. Blue Flow. Um, is a couple things happening on this wall <laughs> and along this side. One is, aside from every, every work in this show, is, it comes out of a daily drawing practice and is meditative practice. So drawing is the basis for everything. These all start out as drawings. And then they're uh, scaled up and realized in, in a sculptural uh, realm. And then lately he's been going back now and putting the artist's hand back on by drawing um, on the surfaces of these pieces. So what's interesting is a couple things here. One is most of these have the drawing back on the surface. And it just sort of happened that way that this show got sort of assembled when it was here and we started putting the work together um, in a very organic way. They all just had this incredible dialogue and when we step back now we're realizing it's for a couple of reasons. One, I was trying to do it so that we had something that was smaller scale, more negative space and more white to not compete with the two larger pieces. But it turns out though, because they're white, you were drawing more on them, and they're totally connected. But the other thing too is this river element. So Stax has this incredible negative space on the right side of this river, this essence of a river cutting through it. And that is sort of such a, a, a core and important element in all of these pieces, visually. But the other thing too is these have so many breaks and openings in the, the circular form and the way these, you know, as you refer to them as polygonal shapes, as they come together, there's so much of a, a void that informed all that. And I think that's where I'd like you to sort of talk about these because they represent something very significant in your meditative practice and as they're being translated into these artworks. Yeah, I think that uh, you're right. The, the, draw, the works over here, uh, and down to that end are mostly, yeah, the gestural hand drawing, the redrawing on the surface, the drawings on the other side, other pieces on the other side are more um, 
for mica surfaces, fabricated mm -hmm. surfaces, and the drawing on the screen sort of brings them all together. Uh, what's important uh, about the uh, pieces in terms of the practice is that the attention is really uh, uh, directed uh, toward the negative space. So uh, when one's pra learning to practice meditation and uh, putting their attention on the breath, for instance, or some object of meditation, which can be the point of a pencil when you're drawing, uh, a lot of the time you're just working on concentration and you're working on uh, just keeping your attention at that point and watching the thing, whatever is coming appear. So you're allowing the line to appear and you're really focused on just watching it happen and then after that concentration builds to a certain point, uh, then there's this peripheral awareness that you can uh, bring in. You can, you can uh, be more uh, cognizant uh, uh, that that peripheral awareness is there. This is kind of the negative space. And in that peripheral awareness, you can ask questions like, who's making this drawing? Where is this creativity coming from? These are kind of ways, uh, it's kind of an insight practice that you can do. And so when you have the marks on the surface, that's where the attention is, that's where the concentration is. And when you have the negative spaces emerging, uh, that's where that peripheral awareness is starting to speak. And uh, so it's really interesting in the hundreds of so drawings that I do, or thousands of drawings over time, uh, when I see uh, the negative space start to emerge in some sort of coherent way that I can tell a story on or recognize or see movement in, I start to pay more attention to it. And so these are selected from, yeah, literally thousands of drawings over many years. Although the show comes from probably about two or 300 drawings over the course of about six months. Uh, but they, 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 it's all an evolution. Anyway, where I see the negative space starting to emerge, uh, I start to pay attention. And I think that uh, in, in this, um, yeah, you can see a figure sort of emerge in that, the way you can see a river emerge in this. The show that uh, preceded this inner hole, which happened in 2010, the breakthrough was uh, when the inner space, the circular form had a, a inner hole in it and that space, negative space, started to resemble a portrait. I had some idea about the emptiness of the self, the emptiness of uh, e ego, egotistic self. And in this case, it was a broader, more s uh, split up piece and the idea was that not only the thought that's the self was empty, but in fact all of the observer, the observer of that consciousness, that peripheral awareness itself uh, is just part of that continuum. So, it, so it's appropriate that it's just the wall there. It's not a person, but it's just the wall. And in the front is this kind of concentrated area where we put all our attention, we put all our attention on our day-to-day -day problems and issues and thoughts and stories, and they're all sort of played out across the surface. And so it's a way to see a kind of a wholeness to, yeah, the self, the construction of the self and the continuum that is, you know, consciousness that underlies everything. So and the other thing too is uh, in this shot is, I, is this one of the largest pieces you've done? Um, these two, I mean, they're 10 by 10? A couple of the largest, yeah. I've done large works, but these are a couple of the largest for sure. Because the scale is, is interesting. There's a number of these that are f like roughly four foot by four foot, and then these are uh, 10 by 10. So it, it's really uh, it, challenging <laughs> to, uh, to, do, to scale them up and to, to keep everything sort of you know, still working in them. But uh, yeah, the river I think is really powerful in this one too. I love that, um, how that, those shapes just, the way they're sort of assembled and it, it's just so subtle but it's just so powerful. And as we were talking earlier, the rivers actually has been a, a theme or some recurring um, aspect of your work that has clearly drawn you. And um, so there's something about it. It's either- Yeah, the, well, the story I tell really, uh, and also in the inner hole show, every uh, piece, circular form, had a riv circular river. And I think of it as a uh, yes. symbol for the flow of thought, you know, the, that, that kind of constant, uh, chatter that goes on in our mind. We've mm -hmm. got to do this, we got to do that. 
Now here, I wonder what he thinks, I wonder what she thinks, this kind of thing. That, that's there's also the flow of energy. And, and yeah, yeah. There's this flow, circuit, this flow kind of going around and around, looping around in our head, mm -hmm. you know. And if it jumps uh, on, the, on, the, on those pieces, there were, these, uh, there were these forms like this. So there's the river and it jumps to the next form and it jumps to the next form. And so each of those forms themselves is one of those little episodes. Like here I'm thinking about work and here I'm thinking about home and here I'm thinking about what I'm going to do after work. Yes. And, the, and it just moves through them. It has its own turbulence and it kind of goes from one to the other. And in the inner hole show, it's circled. And in this show, the uh, change in my meditative practice is that I look at this uh, uh, dependency of one thought on the next. This thought arises because of that thought, this thought. So, you know, you think something like, uh, my shoe's untied. Well, what if I trip? Well, if I fall, I'll hurt myself, and then I won't be able to go to such and such. And if I can't go to <laughs> such and such, then this person won't talk to me. You know, this, so what's happened in the meditative practice is to recognize that chain of dependent arising and to be able at some point to stop it, to right. rest it with mindfulness and stop that course of thinking at deeper and deeper levels. And so in this show where the cycles break, where they, and, and in this case, very open, right? So it's not yes. even just a little break, but This is almost approaching linear. Yeah, so this yes. is a very open state. This is a state where you're just, you're just seeing what's coming and letting it move through you and it's not, it's not looping back. It's not creating that kind of feedback loop. Yeah. No, and it's just interesting how, uh, like I said, we, it, and in some ways it's, it's sort of funny how you have this sort of thought in your mind when you're trying to curate the show, and then you pull these pieces together. When you pull them together, you see something entirely different. Yeah. And I think that's what was sort of uh, interesting that, for me last night. That's true you make too. <laughs> but it also sounded like that was sort of happening to yeah. you last night, seeing these uh, aggregated in different ways in which you had been seeing them for the past year in your studio when you were working on them. Yeah, no, it's true. And, and I should say that I'm telling this story because it's a story that satisfies me and, and suits the work and that yes. kind of, but I don't believe that's the explicit meaning. I didn't, and I didn't set out to make a piece about that. That's actually what I'm learning from making the pieces. Exactly. They're, they're really revealing to me, those teachings are really revealed to me by the practice and considering the stories and looking at it. So it's not the other way around, not assigning meaning to it. So when I bring it into a space like this, like you're saying, it's a different context, it's a different, yes. different walls, a different time in my life. And so the stories change and it helps, uh, it helps to be able to reread them in different ways and to tie in those themes and see how they, yeah. So here's the river, starts in improv. There's the river form, comes through this piece, comes through here, comes yep. down here, appears again. It's really interesting to watch it move around the room. And we'll go ahead and, and then take a shot now of the other side so that since we've referenced it to, for people to see and then also the digital piece, which is sort of the connectivity between these sort of um, two aesthetic realms that are in the, in the show.
So we're standing now on the other side of the gallery opposite where we were just discussing the, uh, the larger works. And the pan showed um, the a selection of the 48 by 48 inch wall sculptures. And the, uh, what was noteworthy, uh, there was one at the end that was very linear. It was a stack and it was sort of a continuation of the other side. And then it, it joined in because it was a river, another river, <laughs> and, uh, and the palette uh, clearly very earth uh, colors then started flowing into these other works. So it was sort of a bridge going that direction to the uh, other half of the show. But these are all, um, as you were saying, they're sort of more inner hole. They're more circular, but they are broken. They're open. Right. But there's also another element you, you might want to talk about. This one is particularly interesting because it's a different sort of bisection or, or cut or, or look, um, a stratification of the earth versus sort of a topographical or landscape right. view. Right, right, right. But, um, but yeah, these are distinctly different. No, not distinctly different. I mean, they're all drawn out of, they come out of the drawings and, and, and what have you, but uh, in the meditative process. But why don't you talk about how you, how you see them in, in a contrast, you know, to, to the other half of the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, when I was selecting them, I guess I was attracted in these to the large flat colors. I've always worked with Formica. The Interhole show was all surfaced in Formica, so I wanted to use that material with these large flat areas of color. Uh, I was trying to find ways to work with those where there'd be sections of them that were drawn in, but it really seemed to be either there was drawing or there was no drawing. There was not, I, I couldn't find a great hybrid look to, mm. to make it work. So, so you uh, had contemplated possibly then drawing. Yeah, and I, try, I looked at ways of drawing on top of the Formica with uh, materials, but um, also not that satisfying. This, uh, the surface that we get with the primer and the sanding is a much more satisfying surface and it takes the okay, so materials much better. But I always like the Formica because of the different textures that are possible yes. and because of the sort of evenness and flatness where you, when you see a, a computer generated uh, diagram of the earth, you know, a map or, right. uh, or a cross section, like you're saying, uh, yeah, it's in these flat colors in these section colors or, or um, posterized colors. So, uh, you know, it's kind of attractive and the colors are really consistent and they're really the stay with the brightness yeah and the formica gives you a variety of textures so that was a kind of a material choice um i guess playing trying to play that absolute regularity versus the, these with the hand gesture and looking for some some play there um yeah, they come out of the computer and then they're carved in that material. That's kind of irregularity in the material and then trying to fit this form of the Formica over it is an interesting challenge. And it sometimes twists it in different ways and gives different like kind of reflections off of it. So it's just different, I think so different material uh, exploration. Uh, and I don't know what the, uh, the drawings, uh, there's a variety when I choose, it's a variety. So I try to see, there's some, there's some where I'm working with gouaches really directly on the uh, on the um, paper and I'm doing these washes these bright color washes and then there's others where there's not any color in the drawing at all so actually these ones that uh, are these two white ones uh, came from pencil just graphite drawings and then I added the color when I came back in on the pieces I decided to add it as color pastel instead so yeah a lot a lot of the differences are involved in choices about working with materials but vis-a-vis -vis the uh, selections from, the tw from 2010, this one's a good example because yeah. um, there is a lot of complexity and detail in these, um, even though they are, as you say, the sort of flat surfaces and, and what have you. Um, there's wood grain, there's sort of um, something, it, because you're looking at this as like coming into the core of the earth, yeah. um, that's sort of more uh, sort of like mica and, right. yeah, you yeah. know, and, and it's sort of way to say it. more elemental. Um, crystalline structure. But this, they also differ quite tremendously from 2010 in that there's so much spatial depth. Yeah, well, in, the, in 2010, I only was, I wasn't carving in thick material. I only used three-quarter inch. 
So, and I only did what they call pocket cuts. So I was doing no 3D carving. It was just coming down and clearing out, coming down and clearing out. So at best I could get a quarter and a half inch and then full. So I had only really choice of like two or three depths to get any noticeable. So weight. these were consciously done this way to get more Yeah, so that's a depth. two inch, the material's two inches thick. And also in a lot of them and on the sides of this and the, the, some of the bigger pieces, there's real 3D carving. So it's going over it and the bit is moving up and down in smooth yes. ways. So you get, yeah, the material is thicker, so you get more relief, and the technique is, uh, is a 3D carving as opposed to 2D pocket cut. So yeah, they're, they're more uh, practice and sophistication with the, with the CNC router itself and learning how to set up tool paths and do that kind of work. And the edges are smooth. There's a lot more refinement in the, in the um, technique. Uh, but um, the, and the other thing, too, about these, that I think is noteworthy, and it's a statement you had made of, um, I'm not gonna get it right. It's something to, in terms of um, so above and below. So, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. because it, you're that's you're talking, sort of- You're talking about the, the, the yeah, so, what, so one of the teachings is that, uh, that uh, what you find that you, in your true nature, when you discover your true nature is the universe is the same as the true nature of the universe. So when in inner hole, it was a closed thing and it was a closed introspection and the discovery was this kind of infinite, this infinity inside myself, this kind of op complete openness, this whole of, of infinity inside myself. And in this show, one of the, one of the uh, changes, one of the growths of that is that not only is it enclosed in, in there, compressed in the center, but when it breaks like that, you can see it's the same. Yeah, and then this breaks yeah, so here. So the wall is the same, the wall doesn't change. The thing that's behind everything is also what's behind, you know, my true nature. And, and this, is, this is a good example then. Is yeah. it, how how yeah. did you state that? I can't remember. I don't have the wording exactly. As above, so below. Yeah, that's as a, above, yeah, so below. A, I, I knew it yeah. was very... Or the microcosm, yeah. macrocosm kind of thing. Got it. There's a similarity in, the, in what's but the But that is a consistency the, between the two bodies of work. Yeah. The difference is, though, is you, you have created these sort of breaks and yeah. fissures. Some are more pronounced and profound than others. Clearly, on the other side, yeah. where they almost... They Some kind of, of them more segmented. Yeah, yeah, very segmented or bordered on yeah. sort of linear paths. Yeah. So, um, but again, everything comes out of the drawings. It all comes out of the meditative process. It all shows this sort of evolution of how you've been developing your own practice and, and, uh, and process. Even though these resemble uh, the 2010 works, they're, right. they're quite fundamentally different yeah. in, in the ways we just discussed. And they're part of this, this ongoing evolution towards these more broken, fragmented, and linear pieces. Well, we, we don't know. We don't know where it's going. That's yeah, we don't know where it's going. <laughs> this is where it stopped right now. But. That's where it is right now. And then, then next week, yeah, we'll just see what comes up in the drawings. And in a few years, we'll make some bigger ones and see where it's gotten to. But the other connection between these two yeah. is, is this piece, which is the, uh, the, the software artwork. Right. And uh, which is also comes out of drawing practice, uh, albeit digital. But um, why don't you talk about that? Because it's sort of what is what bridges these two in this show, but also conceptually, correct? Yeah, well, as you know, when you asked me to do the show, I, and I originally thought I would have a certain number of uh, wall pieces, and I would try to get, produce a piece of software. I always sort of saw it over here somewhere on a screen. Uh, and. Um, to write software has to be a very deliberate thing, and you can see that how that has gone against the uh, uh, improvisational drawing. So the methodology was I was having a problem with because I've gotten over the years further and further away from this very deliberate uh, uh, meaning assignment of meaning in the, into the work. But in software, you got to know what you're doing. You can't just write anything. <laughs> you can't be willy nilly. It doesn't run. <laughs> you have to really kind of have a bigger plan. So that was I was in conflict, and I've been in conflict with that for a while. And I haven't, uh, I haven't had a great resolution of it, but this is 2020, and in 2000, I published a piece called Complex City. So I thought, wouldn't it be grand if I could do a new Complex City 20 years update? But as I got into it and I started doing it, either it was completely derivative of the original Complex City, right. just taking like the, the fancy parts. And, and you don't you like know, doing that. <laughs> I, I, it, just, it, wasn't, it wasn't coming up, yeah, it was just imposing it. Yeah, I don't like to do that. And, uh, 
I want to make new discovery. And then I'd moved out of the city, so it was really hard to write about the city. Yeah. I couldn't authentically write about the city, so I tried the highways. Anyway, it just had a lot of conflict, nailing down meaning and getting it to work. And so as the show approached last spring, I, didn't, I really thought, I'm just not going to have a software piece. I'm just going to go with the wall pieces and it's mm -hmm. not going to work. And then COVID and the pandemic and the lockdown happened. And it just sort of happened at the time. And the timing was that I'd basically gotten the work all ready for the show. We were going to ship within weeks. Uh, we were already talking about shipping dates for the work. Mm -hmm. You'd come up and seen it. And we knew it was going to happen. It was sometime in March. We knew we were going to ship in early April. We we're going to install. And everything stopped. The businesses were closed. Yeah. No one could go out. And, but then I was, the work was kind of done. So then it was like in a kind of a complete open space. <laughs> just kept daily drawing, of course. Uh, so then I had a lot of freedom because I didn't know, we didn't know when it would happen again. We right. didn't know how long it would last. It could have been a month. It could have been a year. We didn't it know how long it would be six months. <laughs> and you, you have to be in business. And New York has to be open. And this yeah. kind of, so I didn't know. So I was in a great state of uncertainty, as many people were. And I was like, May complete open openness and uncertainty, but also complete freedom because really the work was ready. So uh, I just started tinkering and that, you know, in that case, I was not making a piece of software for something and I wasn't directing any meaning on it. I was just looking at stuff online. I saw some guys that started this uh, practice called microcoding and I realized I could write a very simple little thing and improvise with it and play with it. So this would be maybe going back to scales and little tunes in music mm. and just kind of noodling around with no, no intention, which is very similar to the way I started drawing. So that felt really natural. And I found this uh, binary recursive binary tree that I was talking about in some of my classes. And I realized that has a real sense to it. I really love the way it opened and I always have. And I thought, why don't I just start with something as simple as that, which is just take a line, double it, double it, double it, you know, very simple recursive right. algorithm. And it makes a tree really simply. And then all the ways you could manipulate it. So all the scenes in this are manipulations of that. So it's a, it's a kind of an algorithmic drawing with just variations and manipulations based on the sensibility of all the stuff of color and line that I've learned in drawing. And it, so it came together much more naturally and much more in the way that the drawings evolve. So I was very happy with it. And then, you know, it was very somber and I didn't know where it was going. So it was like this tree and I liked it, but then it got turned on its side and I saw uh, this lung shape that kind of came out yeah. and I started to think, huh, oh, that's been on my mind. So in the way that the unconscious reveals itself through reading the drawings, it started to reveal itself through reading the variations in the software that I was tweaking. You know, I was turning it all different ways. It looked many, many different ways before it looked like this. And there was this long black rectangle and that seemed very somber. And I realized like we're in this very somber, uncertain time and yeah. it's not wrong for me. I always try to be optimistic and looking out and looking at all the ways the mind can work, but it's not wrong to relate to. And the way Complex City really related to the way it felt in the city in 2000, which was a very exuberant time, this piece relates really to that whole summer that everyone went through of mm -hmm. staying in their place. And so it's very somber and a lot of people died, you know, and so the black was also appropriate. So, um, yeah, I started to see more about my life and what was going on in my mind in, as, as it came out in the software. And uh, yeah, that's how it evolved. And then the drawing air, of course, um, it is drawing, but it's in a very ephemeral state digitally. Um, so it, it ties and drawing air, obviously taking in, yeah, drawing, taking a breath, taking breath. And, and that's the co core yeah. of uh, most, a lot of meditation practice, focus on the breath. Yes, focus but on breathing. Also, we're all focused on breathing when COVID might keep us from breathing. So it, 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 it fit. For it, me. Ties. Yeah, it, it ties. It all together. ties. But you said something actually very interesting that I, had, I always kind of pondered, but I never really wanted to ask. Um, uh, but you said something very revealing that, and you sort of just confirmed what I was thinking. The, uh, your drawing on paper is very automatic and um, you don't really know it's spontaneous. That's right. But doing this piece of work, you have to be very deliberate and specific because it's code. If you don't, it just doesn't happen. It yeah. doesn't materialize. Yeah. So I see what you're saying now. That, that is an, a huge inherent conflict, yeah. but it sounds like the way you got around that was and maybe this is something that you have to build into your you have to create this sort of 
not free time, but this sort of open with no cap or, or, yeah. or deadline it, it to helps. figure out how to sort of then work yeah, I, I with... I think what also ha helped really well was that I, that I took a very small but effective little algorithm and so I, and I, but it was still kind of open-ended in meaning, and I just played with that compositionally. So I didn't yeah. actually have to direct the code with the meaning. I could actually just use the already moving image on the screen to compose with. So do you think this was a breakthrough then for, in terms of, because I know you're very process-oriented, as we talked about earlier today with one of your other visitors, that, you know, her, and her interest is in process and, and art. Um, do you see that as a, a breakthrough then this in, summer in, ter in terms, in of, terms of the way I can work with code in the future? Okay. Yeah. And, and you still feel like it's then it resonates with your, your meditation practice that way. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a better way to work with code for me now also because code is not what it was 20 years ago. And, and now there are teams and hundreds of people. There's no way at that time there was some sense that I could keep up with like my code would be in some ways the latest research. Like A Life was really about artificial life and that was really at the edge of, it wasn't the cutting edge, but it was out there in terms of what people were doing with artificial life. Got it. But now yes. to do that would be, it's yes. way, way beyond the capacity of one programmer part time. So how do I still engage with code? I need to get simpler. It's more like writing a little poem. And not only that, but I'm not directing the meaning of it, but I'm finding a little piece of code that has interactions that are interesting and then using that as a, as a vocabulary to compose with. And that's more in tune with the way I draw and the way I create these things. Well, and that's what I was going to say. You start with just one mark. It might be spontaneous, but then that begats another yeah, mark and another mark it. and exactly. another mark. So what you're describing is finding some small, some small mark, uh, m mark <laughs> yeah. digitally. Yeah. It sounds like you've, you've kind of cracked the code yeah. how to now yeah. take software art, yeah. which is, has to be structured, and bring it into the same realm. Proceed compositionally. Yeah, yeah I, agree, is, I agree. And to have and the, that fluidity. And this little binary tree was the, was a key to it. Yeah. I mean, it's probably like ten lines of code. Because we really hadn't like talked that. about that. This is the first time yeah. we talked no, about this. So that's really is sort of another breakthrough. Yeah, it's true. Just like it, the. Uh, but you older, see, that's why I didn't want to repeat Complex City because I. Right. That's what I need to get to when I work. I need to get to that. I Something that's new that. and different. Yeah, I need to get to a new understanding of yeah. who I am and where I am and yes. what the practice is and and. The reason I didn't continue to make Complex City 4 and 5 and Color Panel 8, you know, was that I wanted to get move forward. We well, didn't want to, to be forward. a shtick. You, you, yeah. yeah, you wanted it to... to it's, it, it's that wait, waking up to what's new and changing. Well, it's sort of like me when I curate a show or, or work with artists on a show. I want um, a show where there's been some something... Uh, you've had some breakthrough. You've had some something that's new, that's different. And that's what I always love because that, that's what the, you know... It's exciting, and you know the artist is energized and, and what have you, as opposed to oh, it's been eighteen months. We should do a show. Yeah. Here's eight new things, yeah. or ten new things, or whatever. And um, I think that's what's been exciting about working with you is, is that you know you you put a body of work together when you're inspired, and and you've you've um, sort of accomplished something artistically or meditatively yeah. so or it, intellectually. It, 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 you don't publish a scientific paper until you know you've done the research. Yeah, and, <laughs> and so is, your artwork ends up being a, a manifestation of, yeah. of a breakthrough. This is the publication yeah. of it. It, it. It's researched in the cards, and when I'm ready, I publish, and this is the way it's published. So this really is a super significant show on a lot of levels. I mean, aside yeah. from the, the how yeah. profound the yeah, pandemic been, has been. It's been four years since the solo show, too. Yeah. So four years since I made a body of work, so it was time Well, to thanks for out. sharing that, because I, I was wondering about that. Uh, and I wondered if that's why you had sort of maybe moved away from software art for a while, but I knew you also felt like uh, code, and as you just explained, has changed so much and yeah. so profoundly. Yeah. But I think you've sort of found your way back into it. I hope so. I love it, but you know, there's a I lot do of, too. there's I, a lot of uh, yeah, there were a lot of issues. I've been through a lot. I could give you the whole history of all the of all that, but uh, it's doing the kaleidoscope now. Yeah. I hope it's showing up on the camera, on the video. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we're trying to stand so that. What you saw was basically two views of the exhibition. There are 14 works total. And, um, and what we were trying to capture in the writings and in our discussions that John and I've had over the last several months is sort of the significance of the work and how it has been a breakthrough for him. But what we have focused on is the meditative process and the, the drawings. And now that this is complete and it's up and we now 
are seeing these this connectivity with the rest of the show it's been great to kind of talk about that with you yeah. to kind of get your your early thoughts now that you've seen everything up on the wall and in, in curated in a particular way um, it's been a lot of fun so I appreciate it no it's and, amazing uh, it's great to have the discussion that's really what 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 showing it is about yeah. yeah to be able to bring it out and talk about it so thanks for that oh yeah well and i'm sure we'll continue our little video discussions because um it's always so good to talk to you because uh things come to my mind and it's always great to hear how it ties back to other things in your practice or how you think about um you know how it ties to your other work or just even things that are going on sort of in in, in your life and and also now with the pandemic of course that sort of has affected everybody's lives so um very good. It was a great talk. Thank you okay. so much. And I hope people can come in and see the exhibition in person. I hope so. Thank you.